Ladies and gentlemen, here we are again at Sweet Remedy Cafe. It's raining outside. We're inside. It's episode 34. Matt, if I, if I have cooties. You do, a little bit. You took your hand away, didn't well, you? Well, I didn't have a favourite. I'm voting no. Yeah, I'm voting no this one. Maybe not voting. Episode like, number 34. I don't know. What's going to be? Is there it something is. special happening today? Um, I think we've got a guest. Oh, I think we've got a guest. We've got a special guest coming up. But before that, everyone fell off except for Vincenzo Nibali. Jeez, he can go down the of Lombardy. He can go down the hill very well. Much better than... De Plus, De Plus from Quick Step, Step yep. went over the railing, fell 10 metres. Did Apparently, it well, didn't he, eh? Oh, yeah. We'd be having a different conversation if he was dead, yes. but he didn't die, so it's now humorous. It's quite funny. And his bike was stuck in a tree. <laughs> it was pictures of his bike stuck in a tree. And yeah, another specialised bike, Jan, Jan Backlance, he also yes. fell over. He, he broke his back yeah. in six spots and seven broken ribs, so he's a, that's not quite so funny. Now, his teammate Alaphilippe got second, second mm. and Moscon. Europe's most wanted. <laughs> Europe's most hey. wanted. Um, he's under he's under investigation for trying to kill people. <laughs> trying to kill people on a bike race. Get over it. The other bloke who got yeah. knocked down. Yeah. Get him back next time. That's how it works. Anyway, he didn't take a sticky bottle. He no. rides for Sky, so he probably cheats anyway. <coughs> but he got third. So it's got out of a spaceship. That's got what it was. Well, I don't know if he got out in or out of a spaceship. It's a one man spaceship for, for our mate. Through me. Through me. Anyway, Froomey. mate, there's a bit going on in Perth this week. There seems to be lots of racing all happening at once, but this Saturday, the Beverly. Well done, Toby Hodgson, SPR, and Perth Mountain Bike Club who are running the cyclocross race up at Beverly on the 14th. Get yourself a nomination in. I think you can still get in there. Tonight, by the time tonight this. is the last one. Tonight's the last one. Well, we'll go and ride the Beverly. Eddie Hollins is riding the Beverly. He I'm won't... riding the Beverly. Yeah, but you didn't get first and fastest 20 something years ago. No, I didn't get first and fastest in anything, but I'm still riding it. That's good. I'm going to line it up that. and guess what's going to happen? I'm asked for D grade. They might give me C. <laughs> you get C grade, tell you what. Uh, I so might be able to Gary Boyle in it. You're not as good as Gary Boyle. No, well, best day you've ever lived, you don't go as well as Gary Boyle. <laughs> anyway, this weekend the Beverly is on. Get behind it, support it. Something else that's coming up very shortly on the 29th of October, we've got the state. Road title, that's the elite men, the elite women, masters 30 through to 50 plus, uh, I think that's all. It's at York and it's a really, really good course. It's uh, well worth going out there, to take the hour drive to get out to York and ride that. It's a, it's a little bit challenging course. It's a challenging course, it's a great course and it's a state championship. They are looking for volunteers, they need lead vehicle drivers, uh, they need following vehicle drivers, they need people basically to help. So if you've got riders who are going to line up, could you get in touch with Dan O'Donoghue, the man who is running it? and give them a hand. Now there's a bit of a clash of dates. The Gentleman's Pace Race, the old Gents TT, run by Atta, is also on the same day, out which is Hope a little bit it's, I think it's unfortunate. 29K? 29K out there? Something like that. Adam Scott's actually asked me to ride. Um, we'll see. We'll see. It's a good we'll ride. Uh, look, both of them are well worth having a crack at. Uh, just pick one and do one and support the uh, races that are being put on. Speaking of races being put on, Tour of Margaret River coming up. Coming up. And uh, you know there'll be a thousand riders down at Nanup. It's not really in Margaret River. It should be the Tour of Nanup. You can ride with any professional woman you like. And I don't mean that tongue in cheek before you get started. No, no, no I'm not going to say anything. Lots of professional women will be down at And a couple Nanup. of professional men. Will there? Okay, yeah, there's a couple. Couple? Yeah, couple yeah. yeah, so it'll be a good, it's always good. Starts with a team time trial of 40 kilometers. And it ends with a team time yeah, trial. Yeah, look, I'd love a team time trial they do hey. down there. I tell you what, when they were uh, canvassing what the course should look like, they put on on Facebook, what should we do for the team time trial first stage? Should it be 20k? Should it be 40k? And should it be 60k? And the so many people said, oh, 40 to 60k, and I'll put it to you. If you said 40 to 60k, you've never, you've never ridden, ridden one. one. And if you said you wanted it on the last stage of a four-stage bike race, you've still never, never ridden, ridden one. one. Can you imagine having the tour? That's what. We want the ASO to have a team's time trial prologue next year. and Maybe not next year, the course is already done. But in a couple of years' time, Tour de France, stage one, team's time trial. Stage 21. Stage 21, team's team time trial. trial. That would change who the, wins. Quite possibly the most horrible race you'll ever do in your life. Oh my god. Oh, they are That'd terrible. That'd be like the Jens Voigt idea. Let's have it as an elimination. One out every 10k. Yep, you know? or 
you know, and the last person at each stage goes home. Yeah, last person at each stage I'd be goes my hand home. Up. How do I get last? Anyone underneath 70 kilos has to wear a 15 kilo Your CrossFit brick. belt yeah, as they climb like up that, out yes. the woods to give all the fat blokes a chance. Hey, West Coast Masters, once again, superb racing at the weekend. Tom Perry from the Dome Cycling Team showed he was the fastest man, had a big win out at Nirabup, and this weekend, the final West Coast Masters race of the winter season is out at Hearn Hill. There will be trophy giveaways after the race for Rider of the Year, and also there's some food on. So it's if a you're sausage a sausage chisel. Sausage chisel. It's like bunnings for bike racing. You love a sausage. Oh, love you a love a sausage. Sausage so party. So Tommy's will be out there to get his sausage in his mouth while they're panning out the at the mouth. West Coast Masters. Anything else before, oh, we, before we go to special guests? I have to. I have to announce this week's socks winner. Douglas Stewart wins. He sent us a magnificent email. The most important part of it, he claimed to be Jesus. He does claim to be Jesus. He says, I am Jesus, you should listen to me. He does have the hair for it. He doesn't wear a sandal. He wears a Birkenstock. He does work at, wear a Birkenstock and he does claim to be Jesus in this email, which means one thing, he's make-believe. Well, Doug Stewart's make-believe. Well, he is, he is something, that's for sure. Anyway, after this, We'll have our special guest. See you in a second. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back and we have the most successful professional cyclist to come out of Scarborough sitting with us. <laughs> w, right, well, double view, sorry, double view Scarborough, <laughs> same, same. Former world junior time trial champion, current Australian criterium champion, just re signed for Orica. Jessica Allen, Yay. welcome. Thanks. And what brings you back to Perth? Aren't you a professional cyclist? Supposed to be living in Europe. <laughs> yeah, but it gets pretty cold over in Europe this time of year, so it's time to come back home, visit family and friends, and see you guys. Have you looked outside the window? Yeah, it's kind of more like Melbourne than Perth, so. Ah, uh, Melbourne. <laughs> yes. So, what are you doing in your off season, Jess? Other than swimming around Croatia with the rest of the professional women in Australian <laughs> cycling. Yeah. Yeah, I did spend three weeks in Croatia. Um, that was awesome. Just time without the bike and exploring and doing new things. Um, and then now I'm just slowly getting back into it again. Slowly building up the Ks and intensity and off to China in a couple of weeks for a race actually. So that'll be interesting. So that'll be your first hard ride? Yeah, in about two months. So that's going to be great. Are you going to do anything to prepare for that? Uh, Get on, really. the, get on the plane, put the compression socks on and go to sleep. <laughs> I'm taking the Freddy Fresh Legs attempt. Ah, yeah. okay. How far is this race in China? I couldn't tell you to be honest. Probably 100 plus. So you're, you're treating it very seriously. Can I give you one piece of advice? Yeah. Don't eat the meat. Oh no. Oh, don't eat the meat. Don't I eat the meat in China. Alberto, nah, we bring the old tuna cans to China and yeah. Now I, I had a chat with Martin Barras. Uh, tour down under, old mate of mine, old mate of WA Cycle, because he was the old race coach, and he said he was going to give you and a couple of others a bit more of an opportunity during nationals, and you took full advantage of it. And they, you look at the photo of Jess winning the national criterion title, they couldn't even see anyone in the same straight. It's that much of a smashing. But one question I want to know is what's the go with Com Games next year in April for all of you girls? Who's on the cards? Who's Who's not going? Who is going? Is it going to be a pigeon team, or are we bringing the best women's Australian team to Com Games on the Gold Coast? Uh, we're not exactly sure yet. Um, I believe we get six riders. That's the maximum we can take. Um, the rumour at the moment is if you win nationals or Cadell's Great Ocean Race, it's automatic selection. Fair enough. Um, which, yeah, I think is fair enough. They're both really tough races, and the Com Games course looks to be pretty tough as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and I also think if you're ranked number one UCI Australian, um, and if you're in the top eight of the UCI world rankings, I think that's also an automatic selection. That's not bad. Yeah. There's a few things to come out of this year, isn't there, really? And we won't ask Jess about this, but they get six, they're going to use six. That's a good idea. Uh, take the top ranked rider, there's another good idea. And if you're ranked in the top eight, you get to go as part of the team. Now, that's a wise idea. Anyway. <laughs> We won't, don't giggle, we won't talk about that any longer. What was the best part of the year, other than coming here to the B Graders couch? Um, I think it was pretty special the last tour of the year actually, Bowles Rental Ladies Tour. Um, that was our first tour win for the whole year with Annemiek Van Bluten. 
and we all just rode exceptional that week and we basically rode the front the whole tour and yeah it was a really tough week but it was great to finish on a high like that. Yeah. And personally for you, what race did you feel like you rode the best in? Uh, you had some, you rode some big classics Yeah. and you rode some tours, uh, so what was the race you felt like you were going the best in? I think Tour of Flanders this year. Um, just the Tour of Flanders? Yeah, that was awesome Maybe. to race that. Um, just the start was, yeah, unreal. And yeah, I was really happy with my form and did more than I was expected to do in that race. So that was, yeah, a really special race for me. Yeah, did, I reckon, did I reckon get it wrong in the finish? Should the lead out have happened? No, like Anamik was in a breakaway, so. But it all came back together then. Like, with like kilometer. 500 metres to go. Right. I think we did a perfect thing and Gracie did awesome to get second and if the break stayed away I think Anamik would have won. And mm. She does yeah. go okay in Anamik. Yeah, I mean, she's, she's not bad. She's, she is alright. <laughs> For a Dutch girl. For a Dutch girl. She, she just won the national mountain bike. Yeah, she goes yeah. okay. As I said, she goes okay and she's going to be here shortly. Um, yeah. I expect you to get her in here so we can interview her. <laughs> yeah, I think she flies in like two days before Tour of Marg, so perfect. she'll be on a tight schedule. But yeah, we'll we find move. half an hour for her, yeah. no problem. She'll, we'll fit her in, no problem. <laughs> So last time I saw you, we uh, we had lunch in Milan. We did. And the next day you fell off and broke yourself. Yes. <laughs> uh, Sorry, I'm not laughing at you breaking yourself. Just, it's the Tognini effect. That's <laughs> it. Uh, what happened in that crash? Uh, well, I'd been spending about a month training really hard for the women's duro. Um, and yeah, I'd been descending a lot and descending pretty quick with my coach, getting the skills really fine-tuned and... Yeah, this went out. It was funny actually that morning I had a look at my tyres and they were really worn out. And I was like, oh, I better change these when I get home. And that day I just took a corner too quick down the hill and washed out and fractured my uh, scapula. So Very similar to Chavez's crash. Yeah. Road, so you bounced yeah. on your shoulder into the into the side of the road. Yeah, right? basically. Yeah. Were you out with your coach at that time? No, I was solo. So. How does one get home from that? <laughs> Oh, first of all, I called, um, I think I called Martin Varas, actually, um, and yeah, then some people stopped and called an ambulance, and yeah, the ambulance is in Italy horrible, they don't give you painkillers until you see a doctor, which is about two, three hours later. So now, you, you, hard you just suffer it's through it, yeah, it's great. Now, whereabouts were you living in Europe this year? Uh, in Varese. And how was that? How was that? And like, we know you like to cook, because we have sampled your cakes and fudge and brownies and everything. How good was it cooking in Europe for the year for yourself? Yeah, it was pretty awesome. So I live in um, an Italian town called Varese, about an hour out of Milan. Mm -hmm. And um, I live with my teammate, Sir Roy. And we're both, yeah, super keen at cooking and creating new things. So it was really good this year. And um, yeah, she's a great housemate. And yeah, we might might open our own cooking business next year or why, cooking show. Why not? Uh, the markets, the fresh markets over there, in yeah. particular around that area, are pretty good. So you can get some really nice stuff. Because you girls don't really get paid that much, do you? Nah, not, so, a, not a hell of a lot. So you, you have to be frugal when it comes to looking after yourself. Don't yeah, you? yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, we cook on a budget, but we cook good food. So every Friday in our town, we have local markets and we get our fresh food, lots of vegetables, and um, also fish from there too, which yeah. is quite nice. Tell me, did you visit the gnocchiria? In oh, crazy. Always. But I found a better one. Yeah, you have to take me next year then. Yeah, it's called Bologna. It's unreal. Okay, we'll mm. go to both then. Yeah. Um, so, what are your big goals for next year? Obviously, you probably want to defend your crit title. Yeah, I'd more so prefer to win the road race than the crit. Okay. Um, but it's always a really tough race to win that one. But I'll be going to January trying to um, do the best I can there in good form. Uh, probably race two down under, mm -hmm. um, but not sure yet. And then yeah, just hit the Spring Classics pretty hard. And hopefully get to the Giro next year. Yes, yes. Won't be taking as many risks before the Giro next year. If you're going to break yourself, break yourself at the race. Yeah, not exactly. <laughs> the only time I crashed this year was out training, so yeah, that was pretty silly. Yeah, mate. We know the women don't get paid as much as the men yet. Uh, it's moving very slowly, but. What sort of support do you have here in WA uh, as far as sponsors and all that that have helped you get to Orica? Yeah, I've had heaps of support. Like I started riding when I was 10 years old. Um, so Glen Parker Cycles were the first ones to start helping me out with bikes at yeah, 12 years old. Hilton and um, Dennis are always good that way. Yeah, they're great. Get down there. Um, Star Physio have helped me out with a lot of rehab work and now I do my strength and conditioning with them. Uh, Ways have supported me. Always do my tax with KHT now, which is awesome. 
Uh, Dan O'Donoghue helped me out really well this year um, with Telstra Store Wanneroo. So I got an international phone and SIM, which was unreal. And yeah, and um, I've also had a lot of yeah personal support just from great friends and, and family out there as well. Now you don't mind giving back. We see you helping out with the Midland Cycling Club quite a bit. How much does it mean to you to be able to give back to the kids in the Midland Cycling Club when you do coaching sessions? Oh, it's, it's huge for me. I remember when I was, yeah, you know, 12, 13 years old and you had the My Brothers and Durbridge down there helping out. Mm -hmm. So um, I like to give back to the young kids as well. And I'll be at track tomorrow night um, on the tandem with a vision impaired girl, Alicia. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, see you guys down there. Cool. Well, I reckon that's about all we're going to bend Jess's ear for. <laughs> Mate, congratulations on the year. Oh, one more thing. Shameless plug. What are you doing on November the 18th? I believe I'm racing a grey and brown super crisp. Thousand dollars to win. You, yeah. you believe you're racing? We're trying to get more money in the women's cycle. <laughs> yeah, Jess I'm Allen's going to be there. <laughs> Jess Allen's going to be there, and for me, she's favourite. She's my favourite in Russia. You, you, and he works. He employs Rebecca Mackey. Now he's got to go and explain that yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, that, that's right. She's not training properly. <laughs> if you want to contact us, Matt One at iinet.net.au. Give us your feedback. Tell us what you think of Jess. Nothing bad, and uh, we'll, we, you might win a pair of socks. You might win something that's coming up very shortly that we'll break later. Look, gonna look good. All right, we'll Ladies see you next week. See ya. Ciao. <laughs>